What is theater? Theater comes from the Greek word theatron, seeing place. Drama comes from the Greek word drawn, to do. So theater, something is seen, something is done. We use the word theater to signify the building, the company, the occupation. First, the building. The minimal requirement for a theater building or space is nothing more than a place to act and a place to watch. There is no culture that has not had a theater in some form. It has taken place in caves, fields, forests, circus tents, inns, castles, on street corners, and in public buildings. The Greek theaters of the 4th century BC are the first evidence we have of an actual theater building. These huge stone amphitheaters could hold up to 17,000 people. They were built into the side of a hill with the acting space at the bottom or in the valley, so to speak, and the audience sat in tiers up the hillside, thus using the natural acoustics of the bowl shape. Elizabethan thrust stage theaters were the norm in Shakespearean times. These theaters could seat around 2,000 people. The Italian stages of the Renaissance were ornate proscenium auditoriums. For the past 2,500 years since the building of Greek theaters, theater, the building, has been central to urban architecture, just as theater, the art, is central to contemporary life. Second, the company. Theater is a collaborative art, and we call the combined cast and crew of the production the company. Third, theater as an occupation. There are four aspects to theater as an occupation, work, art, impersonation, and performance. The work of the theater, producing, directing, acting, designing, building, crewing, stage managing, house managing, playwriting, composing. It's not at all uncommon for some to perform more than one kind of work. Director actors, designer builders, playwright directors, etc. The second aspect of theater as an occupation is theater as art. The word art brings to mind creativity, imagination, aesthetics, and furthermore, we expect art to capture our emotions, our intellect. The art of the theater is never pure art in the sense that it represents the personal vision of a solitary artist, like, say, painting or sculpture. The art of theater is a collaborative art, combining the arts of acting, writing, designing, and architecture, and as such, its art can be judged only on its own merits, and theater is a living art form. The third aspect is impersonation. Theatrical art involves actors impersonating characters, and this is unique to the theater, separating it from all other art forms such as painting, poetry, sculpture, music, performance art, and the like. In fact, it is the single most important aspect of the theater, impersonation. In the earliest forms of theater, the actors wore masks to separate the actor as himself from the actor as character. The mask provided both a physical and a symbolic separation between the actor and the character, thus aiding the audience to suspend their awareness of the real world and accept in its place, the world being created on stage. Masks are still seen on stage today, but more often than not, costume and makeup support the delineation of character in the modern theater. However, the mask remains the symbol of the theater, the double masks of comedy and tragedy. The act of impersonation, with or without an actual mask, depends on an implicit agreement between the actor and the audience. The actor will agree to be a character, and the audience will pretend to see him or her 
as that character. According to Denis Diderot, an 18th century French dramatist and the author of the first encyclopedia, when the actor has perfected his or her art, it is the simulated character which seems to live before our eyes, while the real person has no apparent life at all. Diderot called this the paradox of the actor. And of course, we as audience members know the actor exists behind the character. At the end of the play, we applaud the actor. And not only that, as we watch good theater, somewhere in the back of our minds, we are applauding the actor. Our appreciation of theater rests on our dual awareness of actor and character, and on our understanding that they live in the same skin. The final aspect of theater as an occupation is the actual performance. The theater makes use of two general modes of performance, presentational and representational. Presentational is the basic stand-up comedy or nightclub mode. The audience is continuously, continuously acknowledged. Today, many plays employ some presentational techniques, including perhaps the use of asides or actors speaking directly to the audience, or soliloquies when an actor is alone on stage and the audience overhears him speaking his thoughts. Representational is indirect, staged, as if no audience were present. As a result, the audience is encouraged to concentrate on the events that are being staged and not on their presentation. This mode of performance makes the drama dramatic rather than just theatrical. The audience is asked to believe in the play and allow themselves to forget that the characters are really actors. This is the suspension of disbelief, and it allows the audience to empathize with the characters, to care about what happens to them. When this happens, the audience experiences the magic of the theater. Well-written and well-staged dramas make people feel. They draw in the spectator. And as it turns out, theatrical performance is always both presentational and representational, simply due to the audience. We, as the audience, always look for two things in a performance, characters we can care about and actors we can admire. We want to see the characters struggle and the actors sweat. In watching a performance, we as audience members are looking for a well-crafted dramatic story and extraordinary individual acting performances. Two other aspects of performance distinguish theater from certain other forms of performance. Theater, unlike video or film, is a living, real-time event. The audience and the performers share the same space at the same time. Live theater is always a two-way communication between the stage and the audience. In fact, you'll often hear film and television actors express their desire to return to the live theater for the interaction and excitement of immediate audience response. And finally, theater is, in most cases, a scripted and rehearsed event. Although there may be some improvisation and ad-libbing, most plays are set by opening night. The text of a play is not the play itself. The play fully exists in its performance only. What makes a script an important aspect of the theater is that it generates future production of the play. 2,500 years of play production, from the time of the ancient Greeks to present, have left us thousands of scripts to draw upon.